we're, we're back live. This proves that it's live. This is, you know, not as seamless as it might seem if it were an edited show. But anyway, joining me right now is Margo Oge, the Director of Transportation and Air Quality for the Environmental Protection Agency. Great seeing you here nice again. Nice seeing you, John. You guys had a fascinating announcement last week with Sergio Marchione in your lab in Ann Arbor, Michigan, talking about Chrysler going to do a hydraulic hybrid. hybrid yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we keep hearing about battery hybrids yeah. and all that. Yeah. Bring us up to speed with this well, effort. We were very excited. And, you know, meeting actually the, the chairman of, of Fiat was a lot of fun. He's a, I think he's pretty unique. He's a very unique, <laughs> unique individual. Unique guy and very real. Not other people are not real. Right. Uh, but this is, you know, hydraulic hybrid, you know, we have been working on hydraulic hybrids for over 15 years. And it is a partnership, it's a government industry partnership, it's perfect. Government puts resources, industry puts resources, and we join our technical staff, not just, you know, money, to develop this hydraulic hybrid. And we have come a long way. Like today, there are probably dozens of refuge trucks uh -huh. in the market, both Michigan and Florida, with hydraulic hybrids. Uh, that's a great systems, application yeah. because it's a garbage great application. trucks. And also we have uh, UPS and FedEx um, vans. About 40 of them are going to be funded with the DOE uh, city program, you know, the clean city program. But so hydraulic hybrid is, is um, you know, we don't select, you know, technologies, you know, we're technology neutral, but it just happened that our engineers have innovated in this area. You know, we're holding over 60 patents on hydraulic hybrid. And, and the concept is pretty simple, really. It's similar to an electric hybrid. So instead of having batteries, you have um, uh, accumulators. Instead of having um, a, an electric motor, you have a, a hydraulic motor. Uh, and the difference is that the cost of hydraulic hybrid, hybrids are significantly lower than, than, than electric, maybe one third. So what we're going to do with, um, with Chrysler is to put our resources together, take a year. Actually, uh, we have an agreement that by July of 2012, um, Sergio and Lisa Jackson are going to drive the first vehicle on the road minivan. So I hope it will work. You know, we're going to continue working on the electronic system and the hydraulic, and Chrysler is going to do a lot of work on uh, things that are going to be very important, the packaging, you know, the noise, uh -huh. the vibration, all uh -huh. that stuff. I know Ford had looked at this and going Ford back uh, at, yeah. 10 years ago or something like that. Well, maybe 14 years ago. Uh -huh. And we had uh, uh, a lot of positive work. Ford decided not to yeah, pursue yeah, it yeah, anymore. Yeah. Um, the opportunity for them is always yeah. there to come back yeah. and do something with it. Um, so, yeah. We'll let this announcement go a minute okay. and pick it up again in a second because it's loud. And then I think it's Eaton Corporation has been developing the ones for the refuse trucks and uh, other medium duty you applications. Know, Parker, Parker uh, has been um, doing a lot of the work. Parker is a very big company when it comes to refuge trucks. Uh -huh. uh, Eaton has been involved. Um, FUV, which mm -hmm. is a Michigan-based company, has been doing a lot of the technical work, mm -hmm. a lot of the engineering work. Um, the U.S. Army has been a partner. Oh, interesting. Uh, Navistar, mm -hmm. uh, FedEx, UPS. So, so there's a lot of interest. Oh, there is a lot of interest, yeah. Now, why has it taken so long to get into light vehicles? That's a very, <coughs> excuse me, John. Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Um, and I hope my staff don't mind me saying so. <laughs> <laughs> I think given um, the, the structure of the hydraulic vehicle, hybrid system, in my view, the best application is the heavier duty application, like a refuge truck, uh, because you save so much by absorbing the, 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 the stop and go, you know, you know, this, you know, travel that they have. Mm -hmm. It makes more sense on a heavy duty and medium duty, and that's where the first success. And it's easy so, to package. And it's easy to package. That's that's it. When it comes to the lighter duty, um, I think the issue of packaging. I mean, we know the technology works. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that you're going to get um, significant fuel economy, you know, benefits. S you know, uh, city driving, you get 60 percent improvement. That's pretty big. That's huge. That's huge. So we know it works. There is no question it works. We have done a lot of research to 
to, to put forward lighter weight materials, so we're working with graphite instead of steel. So these systems, although heavy, they're much lighter than they were. So, but the, the question is, and the challenge is exactly what, what you put your finger into, packaging, and making sure that for the light duty sector, you're addressing issues like noise. Okay, so that's why it hasn't taken on. So minivan, I think it's a perfect. You have light more duty. room have more to package room. it. And if it works in, a, in this type of minivan, then you can see it in SUVs and other. Very interesting, as, and as you point out, a, a lot lower cost than going with yeah. today's batteries yeah. at least. Yeah. Yeah. But all these technologies, we're, we're really excited about all these technologies. We don't want to select anything. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, because there's still so much room to reduce the cost of electric. Right. you know, powertrain. Um, so but I find it so interesting that because the EPA works with almost every single car company in the world, you've learned a lot of things, and that's what allowed the EPA to come up and design and develop its own yeah. hydraulic hybrid. But, but also, you know, it, it provides an opportunity for EPA to be viewed, not just this tough regulator, you know, because although we are regulators, we want to do common sense things, uh -huh. because if we don't, nobody wins, you know, everybody loses. I mean, what's the point of having a very clean car that is very expensive and nobody buys it? Everybody right. loses. Right. Our industry loses, the environment loses, the economy loses. So, 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 but you know, having the ability to work with the car companies so is something that is non-regulatory. It's also, I think, very important element in the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. We've got some questions from our viewers here. Miradart wants to know, is oh, the- Oh, this is a different setup you have. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 okay. that's right. Okay. Is the hydraulic hybrid for large trucks available anywhere, or are these just pilot projects in Michigan and Florida? So, it, there are pilot uh, projects in Michigan and Florida. Okay, so- So, Parker, um, and, and they need to talk to Parker. Parker has a business plan for the next five, 10 years, and they, ha they are really um, very excited about taking this beyond pilot mm -hmm. you know, to the commercial. Very center. good. Um, Jim Schultz wants to know, do you know anything about the Lightning hybrid car that's being developed in Loveland, Colorado? The car was shown two years ago at the Denver Auto Show, but because of funding limitations, it was never put into production. No, I don't. Uh, I've would never love heard to, of it. To, yeah. to hear more about it. Okay, well, you're, you're, thanks for sending that question in, yeah. Jim. You said that you didn't want the EPA just to be seen as a tough regulator, but now everyone in the industry is talking about post-2017 yes. CAFE regulations. What's your thoughts going along those lines? Because there's a, a wide range of maybe establishing uh, 42 miles per gallon as the target, or maybe 62 miles per gallon as the target. Well, where does Margot Oge come down yeah, in that you thinking? Know, um, I think we have um, a tremendous opportunity to work with uh, our sister agency, NHTSA, and the state of California to bring about a national harmonized program. I mean, we get it, we understand the importance that the industry has for regulatory certainty, the importance that the industry is placing to have one national program. And that is really the basis behind the announcement that we made last week, working very hard with the state of California, so we are all on the same time frame. And our hope is that we're going to end up in the same place mm -hmm. at the end of the day. You know, John, it's, it is very unfortunate that um, people have concentrated on this 6% improvement annually, uh, the, six, the 62 MPG equivalent in, in 2025. Uh, we have made no decisions. Actually, what the agencies have done is put out some technical analysis, and they are that, just technical analysis, the preliminary technical analysis. And if you are to look at the 6% improvement, the 62 MPG, the costs are horrendous. Mm -hmm. So we don't know where we're going to end up, because more analysis needs to happen. But at the end of the day, you need to develop standards that are cost effective. Right, that people can that go people out and buy. That people can go and buy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can put the pieces together and figure out how we're going to do this. We're going to do it in a careful way. We're going to look at cost of these technologies. We're going to look at the benefits that we're achieving, and we're going to look at the overall impacts to, to the economy. Mm -hmm. um, and $3,600 per car, it's just not sustainable. Mm -hmm. And that's what our preliminary analysis says right now. Mm -hmm. so, so what I would tell to your viewers, 
we have made no decisions. We're actually in the beginning of doing very detailed work with each one of the companies. We're going to sit down with California, with NHTSA and ourselves to talk to each one of the companies because, as you know, everybody's in a different place and we want to be sensitive to the fact that some co companies have more co trucks than cars, mm -hmm. some companies have more cars and very few trucks, and come up with a program that doesn't undermine the competitiveness of the industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it sounds like a very sensible approach to me. What else? Anything else that's going on uh, at EPA that you're involved on? in? Uh, that we're involved, um, you know, there is a lot going on right now on renewable fuels. There is a lot of um, concern about some of the decisions that the agency has made on uh, renewable fuels. As you know, um, EPA is not mandating renewable fuels. Congress Congress did it, right. told us, right. you know, EPA, write these rules based on the best science you can, 30, you know, 36 billion gallons in 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, now, there are, there are procedures by which organizations can get um, the go-ahead to introduce uh, mid-level blends of ethanol. And you were talking to Pat earlier, and Pat's group has done outstanding work. They have spent over $40 million testing cars and trying to figure out if we put E15, you know, 15% of ethanol, in 2001 and newer cars, are we going to have any durability problems? Are we going to have any catalyst impacts? Uh, are the missions going to stay the same? And the findings consistently, consistently saying the cars are going to be okay. But we don't believe that's the case for 2000 and older cars and non-road equipment. So there is a lot of controversy about potential misfueling. Uh -huh. We're concerned about it also. So what we want to do is put forward some programs, including labeling, that can minimize the potential misfueling mm -hmm. of a NE15 blend with an older car or an off-road equipment. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that we're spending time on. Yeah, well, you have your plate full, I'll, I'll have to say, but I'm getting the sign we have to, okay. to wrap this up. John, but Margos, thank thanks so much. It's, nice it's always you. a pleasure talking with you. Really you enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Auto Line Live from the Washington, D.C. Auto Show is brought to you by our Inner Circle sponsor, Bosch, invented for life, and also by Dow Automotive Systems, innovations for clean powertrain solutions, and by the Steel Market Development Institute, automotive steel technologies powered by strength, fueled by innovation.